coming so we'll I'll just uh, take half a minute wait for half a minute and the recording is on yes so we are we are talking about noise um, noise power noise power is ktb and when you have an application for suppose you are taking i in the morning i did tell you if you are talking about an fm radio i don't remember if i told in your class or the other class so the radio application is somewhere around 86 megahertz to 108 megahertz so the bandwidth of the fm the bandwidth of the fm radio is 108 megahertz minus 86 megahertz whatever that is 22 megahertz is allocated for the application you right so that is nothing but the two times because your magnitude spectrum is even in nature it always covers equal halves on either sides of your y axis because it is because your magnitude spectrum is even in nature so your noise temperature is pn your uh, noise temperature which is written as noise power by boltzmann constant into bandwidth this pn by bandwidth is nothing but your power spectral density power spectral density the power watts per hertz watts per hertz isn't it if you remember if you remember the formula also it is power spectral density for every spectrum you are trying to find its power for every instant of frequency you are trying to plot its power so it is power per every frequency watts per hertz so you will you can rewrite this as you're talking about two times bandwidth so multiplying and dividing the same thing what you will be getting is two times snn of omega if you multiply and divide this whole thing will become snn of omega two times snn of omega by k this is your noise temperature available noise temperature in terms of power spectral density now repeating the same thing that we have done in the morning so this is uh, this is the source impedance and this is the load impedance load impedance now if you have your excess if you have your reactance as your inductor as inductor what will be the impedance that we are talking about and if it is a capacitor what will be your reactance what will be your for when you talk about capacitance it will be 1 by j omega c and for inductance it is j omega l what are they called did you ever hear them Inductive reactance and capacitive reactance. That's what I asked you. What is the reactance? What is the reactance? One second. Yes, the reactance of the source or the load can be given as J omega J omega L or one by J omega C. It is. Uh, this is not of uh, major point here, but I'm just. I have just asked you, and according to the maximum power transfer theorem, the maximum power will be transferred across the load resistor if the source impedance is equal to the load impedance. So I have just written that again. Okay, in terms of impedance, morning we talked about R L and R N. Now we are talking about source impedance and load impedance, and the available noise power in terms of noise temperature you know that pn is ktb now bandwidth is f2 minus f1 this is written as df here this is written as df here so pn is equal to boltzmann constant into temperature into df into df the frequency change this is another way of writing it so, and this is the available noise power available noise power that is found across the load resistance right next thing is equivalent noise temperature and noise figure we can, we are up to finding equivalent noise temperature and noise figure so as i just hang on this is a two port network two port network and if you see 
the output of the output of the first amplifier consider this as amplifier 1 this is amplifier 2 the output of the first amplifier is given as output to the second amplifier and such networks are named as cascaded networks i hope all of you know that and we all talked about noise we are talking about noise at all times so what is noise basically there are three types of noises that we have seen first one is the noise that is introduced by the source that is input noise produced by the input and the second noise that we are talking about is internal noise internal noise because of the present uh, resistors capacitors or transistors internal noise generated so let us there are three types of noise that is generated one is n01 which is because of the source second is second one is no2 which is because of the amplifier one internal noise generated by amplifier one likewise by amplifier two is no3 so the total output noise power the total output noise power is summation of these three summation of these three and uh, there is something uh, i mean there is something else there is a did we see noise figure in the morning noise figure i don't think so isn't it and uh, there is another factor which is known as noise figure noise figure here f so it and that noise figure basically talks about the signal degradation in the network that is how well your output signal output signal is the obtained signal is degraded from the given input signal input signal is the actual signal and the output signal is the obtained signal so the degradation is talked about as noise figure and it talks about as snr at input by snr at output snr at output we talked about snr at input and output in the morning isn't it did we or did we not did i tell you what snr is in the morning snr is signal to noise ratio at the input and signal to noise ratio at the output did we talk about it in the morning yes or no did you hear the term from me in the morning class someone please unmute and talk ma yes ma'am that was so simple i don't know why you guys are taking so long so here the same noise figure is given as as i told you it is actual noise power actual noise power spectral density at output by output noise power spectral density for a noiseless network it is also given in this way and the noise figure uh, the noise figure is obtained in terms of effective noise temperature this is the relation between noise figure and effective noise temperature so if we talk about spot noise something known as spot noise figure your noise figure f is defined as total incremental available output noise power that is how well your output noise power is ranging from n02 minus n01 what is the increment that your output noise power has seen so when the temperature is zero what will be the output noise power i mean there won't be any noise when the temperature is zero noise will also be zero as the temperature increases noise also increases so the range in which your output noise is changing according to the temperature variations in the circuitry is needed and that when you are talking about the uh, about the total increment in the available output noise power by 
incremental available output noise power due to source alone due to input alone right that is the input output to input is what we are talking about in a way right so here it is given as f is given as if you see the topmost uh, uh, i mean the top part of the slide f is dn not by dn s not so dn not the total output noise as i told you is basically internal noise plus noise contributed by the source it's always internal noise plus noise contributed by the source so if you do that and if you simplify it this is what you are going to get it is 1 plus dn sys that is the system noise by the source noise ds not and when you convert that in terms of when you exploit the relation between power spectral density and noise temperature this one the relation that is shown in here k and uh, 2 cancel out leaving you with leaving you with when you are with the power the power is basically the power is basically trans uh, I mean translated in terms of effective temperature what you will be getting is noise figure f is 1 plus t by t naught or t s t naught is simply the source temperature or the room temperature the room temperature that we are talking about which is 290 degrees kelvin and effective noise temperature is t which is t s into f minus 1 right do remember this it's a very important uh, important uh, expression when you are trying to find out the relation between noise figure and effective noise temperature and we have talked about signal to noise ratio also earlier so the average noise figure as i told you what is noise figure snr of input by by snr of output so this is si by ni by s naught by si i will rewrite this as si by s naught into n naught by ni that is what this will come up to isn't it so what is gain we have seen that gain is output by input output power by input power here if you see this expression is input power by output power so input power by output power and it is nothing but one by gain one by gain so your noise figure can also be given as noise figure can also be given as one by gain times n naught by n i if you only have a single two port network if you have a single two port network right and if you are talking about the output noise of the single two port network output noise of the single two port network you will get it as g a into n i g a n i into f minus 1 we will see how this come has how this has come noise at the two port network noise at two port network right so that will be noise present at the input what is the noise present at the input we know that output is uh, sorry gain is output by input so if you want to talk about the noise power at the input it is nothing but ga into ni ga into ni the gain of the entire circuitry into ni and noise of the two port noise of the two port is given as ntp and output noise is nothing but your n naught your n naught and with the relations between by exploiting this relation right in the noise figure you are substituting your n naught with noise figure right which is uh, uh, g a n i f it will be g a n i and f that will be your n naught is equal to g a into n i plus n to p so the noise of the two port network will be equal to g a n i into f minus 1 into f minus 1 so this will be the noise at the two port network so what will happen when you have cascade what will happen when you have cascade of networks earlier we only had single network so we could uh, say that n naught is equal to 
n not is equal to uh, we could uh, give the expression of uh, 1 by ga into n not by ni but here if you have multiple amplifiers so we will see the analysis this is the important question that i was talking about and the number of stars indicate the number of times it was appeared in the previous question papers noise figure for cascaded networks which are of two ports right so this is the input resistance which generates the noise n n01 this is n02 this is n03 right so the total output noise is what we have just seen it is n01 plus n02 plus n03 and n01 is the source noise power at source or generated by source the noise power generated by source and n02 is because of amplifier 1 internally generated at amplifier 1 and uh, no 3 is by amplifier 3 so this n not is nothing but this is n not this is n02 this is n03 so we have to see how these have come up okay how this expression has come up the total output noise power is this so when we start initially so we'll start with the gain we'll start with the gain so ga1 is gain power gain to be very precise power gain of amplifier 1 and ga2 is power gain of amplifier 2 now the overall gain the overall gain of the cascaded network of uh, this is very important and uh, please pay attention ga is GA one times GA two. When you had a single network, it was only GA. But now you have a cascade, so it is GA one into GA two, right? Now we have already seen the total output noise power. Total output noise power n not is equal to n zero one plus n zero two plus n zero three. Okay, we will see how that individually happens. So n zero one is G A one times G A two times the input noise power. The gain, the gains that you have received from the output also indicate what the input noise power is. So the total input, the total. noise power due to input noise power is ni what is ni ni so first let me write what no one is clearly no one is output noise power due to input noise power so this is input noise power and your input noise power it is characterized by both the gains that you are receiving from the output so this is given as ga into ni so no1 is ga1 ga2 into ni that is the expression for no1 okay now no2 what is no2 firstly no2 is internal noise power generated by amplifier 1 internal noise power generated by amplifier 1 right so no2 is equal to ga1 into input noise power is mandatory into f1 minus 1 into ga2 that gain so we have we know how this expression has come up we have just seen that expression in the previous slide so ga into ni into f minus 1 that is the output of the two port network so here the gain is ga1 into ga2 the gain is ga1 into ga2 and ni into f1 minus 1 
because it is a uh, two port network okay we are just uh, writing the whole expression down so this can also be rewritten as ga into ni into f1 minus 1 f1 minus 1 this is no2 and no3 no3 what is no3 internal noise internal noise power generated by amplifier 2 by amplifier 2 so no2 is given as sorry no3 no3 is given as very simple you have gain 2 ga2 into ni into f2 minus 1 this remains the same please note that this remains the same because it is the noise power of a two port network the gain the gain is the gain that is obtained from the total network because the center is this network is affiliated to both these two this gain well, how is this gain obtained by the input the output is given as input output one is given as input to second network and this gain also affects the second network noise power and that's why it is included in when you're talking about na2 no2 but when you're talking about no3 it is only the entire network ga2 completely talks about the ga1 so you do not need to include it so no3 is equal to ga2 into ni into f2 minus 1 and hence the expression that we have seen okay now if you are talking about overall noise figure this is the noise power this is the noise power that you see on the board noise power when you add all three of them you get the noise power and how about the noise figure so we have found that noise figure f is si by ni by s0 by n0 and this is nothing but 1 by ga into n0 by ni where ga is the gain n0 is the output noise power and ni is the input noise power okay so i want the output noise power may i know what the output noise power is output noise power is ga ni f this is equation one and the output noise power that i have obtained from the previous expression no2 no3 is equal to you equate 1 and 2 you equate 1 and 2 and what you will be getting is ga ni f is equal to ga into ni plus ga ni f1 minus 1 plus ga2 ni f2 minus 1 this whole thing is n naught and not now i want my noise figure from here so my noise figure f is equal to 1 plus 1 plus f1 minus 1 can i write this f1 minus 1 plus ga2 by ga into f2 minus 1 into f2 minus 1 so hence the expression that you see once cancel out and what you will be left with f1 plus f2 minus 1 by ga1 f1 plus f2 minus 1 by ga1 if you simplify this that is what you are going to get f1 plus f2 minus 1 by ga1 uh, okay you can write it this way also and why is it by ga1 ga is ga1 ga2 isn't it gain 1 if you cancel out the ga2s what you will be left with noise figure f is equal to f is equal to f1 plus f2 minus 1 by ga1 right this is the noise figure so if you are asked any question related to noise figure or of cascaded two port networks or noise power of cascaded two port networks you have to do the entire thing that we talked about just now right from the noise figure okay right from the noise figure of the single two port network okay now uh, if you want to extend this to k stages 
if you want to extend the same concept to k stages it is f1 plus f2 minus 1 plus by ga1 so on and so forth this is extending it the cascade to k networks and likewise finding the uh, equivalent uh, noise temperatures we've already seen uh, effective noise temperature in terms of uh, noise figure so it's just a different variation of this right with this we complete the entire syllabus the last part it's it, it's just simple understanding of the two port networks a cascaded two port network that you already have from your edc or networks and networks i guess two port networks and networks so you can relate it to that and we have already talked about the basic elements like what noise figure is and then uh, what is uh, signal to noise ratio so you just have to remember the formula the entire fourth and fifth units are a test for your memory power and the way in which you can apply the fourier transforms that you know of so nothing beyond that um, you need practice that is for sure you need practice it is not difficult if you practice it two to three times trust me the subject is good enough i won't say decent enough i won't say it is easy but it is a decent subject right